Welcome to Your Life with your hosts, Dr. Tony Hare and Dan DeBruler. Together, we're exploring the questions everyone has about life, love, parenting, and relationships. Tony Hare is an independent certified coach, teacher, and speaker with the John Maxwell team, author and inspirational speaker who lives in Fayetteville, North Carolina. He has a bachelor's degree in criminal justice, a master's degree in pastoral counseling, and a doctorate of philosophy in Christian counseling. Dan DeBruler is a retired U.S. Army communications specialist and has spent more than 20 years encouraging listeners through Christian radio. And good afternoon. It is so good to be with you today. I'm Dan DeBruler. And, you know, I want to kind of preface what Dr. Hare and I are going to talk about here in a few minutes. We're going to talk about the power of the tongue as we read in James 3.6. Let me read this to you from the CSB version of the Bible. In James 3.6, he says, And the tongue is the fire. The tongue, a world of unrighteousness, is placed among our members. It stains the whole body, sets the course of life on fire, and is itself set on fire by hell. And with that, we will begin this discussion today. It's so good to be with you. Dr. Hare, welcome. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Dan, I, everyone probably wonder why we're laughing, but uh, we are here and excited about <laughs> this great opportunity we get once again to share uh, the Word of God and how it applies to our everyday life and how it applies to your life and uh, understanding more about the tongue and what the Word of God shares with us uh, about the tongue. And I think, Dan, over the probably the past, like I said, the past few months, three or four or five maybe, this has been uh, very important to me because um, I, you know, I try to watch what I say, uh, how I say it, and then uh, try to determine even if it needs to be said, you know, when we consider proper speech. Um, and James, when he shares with us and talking to uh, believers uh, and, and actually pointing out that, that, uh, that uh, member of the body, that aids in uh, speech, that aids in breathing, and uh, that aids in tasting our tongue, which we probably don't really consider a whole lot unless we are eating. <laughs> well, that's a fair point, man. And, but, you know, as, as I... As I look at this today and, I, yes, and I think about it, you know, and like you, mm-hmm. I really do try to watch my mouth. Yes. Um, sometimes <laughs> I'm not very good at it, mm-hmm. but other times I realize that um, I have uh, been going, undergoing a transformation <laughs> since mm-hmm. meeting Christ because <laughs> he, he's working on me and, and I have more opportunity to work on that yes, because, because that is so um, prominent in our mm-hmm. lives. I mean, mm-hmm. we have a tendency to just say, but really, ha- have you ever thought about just how powerful your words can be? Oh, I mean, this absolutely. is what the question of James compares yes. our tongue to a fire. Absolutely. We all know how destructive fire can be. Just a tiny spark mm-hmm. can start a massive forest fire. And similarly, um, a single word can change a life for good or for bad. Absolutely. And one of the interesting things about this uh, chapter is that he opens up talking, saying that really uh, not many should uh, want to become teachers uh, because, of course, we'll held to a higher degree of responsibility because the words that we use uh, in verse 1, not many should become teachers, my brothers, because you know that we will receive a stricter judgment. So anyone in a position... uh, Uh, of instructing or teaching uh, individuals. You have a lot of influence over them. So with the words that come out of our mouth, we have to uh, be very mindful of what we say and, and making sure that our words are understood by those individuals that we are instructing. And what I mean by that is making sure that the word that I use in order to uh, be able to get the lesson across or the thought, uh, more importantly, across. Uh, if I use the word bar, well, what bar means to me needs to mean the same thing to the group that I'm speaking with, though I need to I have the responsibility of making sure uh, that they understand uh, what that particular word means so that we won't have any uh, misconceptions. But when we really give mind to the tongue being a fire, in verse 6, it's, it's strange that 
that would be said, and the tongue is a fire. He didn't say it might be a fire. didn't say it could be a fire. But he actually said, James said, it is a fire. The tongue, a world of unrighteousness, um, it says, is placed among our mem- and it stains the whole body. Mm-hmm. Now, we have to give mind to the fact, because when I ask myself, well, you know, why would he Why would he say it that way? Well, I have to be mindful that the tongue is a member of the body. And ever since the fall, the, the tongue is a part of the flesh. And so the flesh in its rebellious nature, the tongue only wants to walk according to the flesh. The tongue only wants to function according to fleshly things. And so there is Uh, a battle going on every day between the flesh and the spirit. And if we would really bring this home, before we came into Christ, there were words that we use with our tongue to express what we were thinking or to express what uh, Matthew talks about, the evil treasure that was in the heart of the man who will bring forth evil things. Well, before Christ, we may not want to really think about it uh, this way, but we had an evil tongue. We didn't have a good tongue, and we spoke according to the flesh because we were in rebellion against God. We were not walking in the Spirit. We were not saved. And so when we think about when he says, and the tongue is a fire, I got a better understanding of why he was saying what he was saying because he was basically telling us, yes, you are saved. Your spirit is saved, but your flesh your soul. We still got to work that thing out. And how we are aware of where you are is by the words that come out of your mouth. You know, it's something really important to to recognize here yes, is, sir. is when, when he says it corrupts the whole body. Uh-huh. So, so we're not talking about just what we do that affects others because no. it's not just yes. external damage yes. that the tongue can do. Yes. James does say, again, it corrupts the whole body, mm-hmm. our whole body. Our words not only affect others, but they also affect us. And mm-hmm. that, so that means that negative, hurtful, and deceitful <laughs> words not only hurt others, but they yes. can degrade our own character yes. and poison our inner world. Absolutely. And and Dan, when I, I just said to myself, because see, I, I'm trying to understand Tony. So in trying to understand me more and be introduced, allow the Holy Spirit to introduce me to myself, I find myself then I went back and looked at, you know, chapter 15 of of Matthew and down at verse 10 after Jesus was really dealing with the tradition of the elders, he says in verse 10, summoning the crowd, he told them, he says, listen and understand, it's not what goes into the mouth that defiles a person, right along the lines of what you're talking, Dan, that defiles a person, but what comes out of the mouth, this defiles a person. And what comes out of our mouth comes out by way of our tongue. And we're talking about the speech because that speech, he was addressing the tradition of the elders. And uh, we could even go to a, a another gospel and actually uh, share with you uh, the importance of speech and Jesus addressing, you know, the Jews um, in, in the word of God. And see, what we, what we really have to grasp is that the condition of our spirit, and the condition of our flesh is two different things. And the tongue is used, and this is why he, when he actually goes on, James, in this particular chapter, and he continues to talk about it, and it becomes more clear to me as I'm talking to you, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> he, he begin, The tongue, that unruly evil that's full of uh, evil passions, that tongue is the instrument or the organ that the believer uses also to bless God or to thank other people or to pray with the tongue. And so at some point we have to realize that, as James goes on to say, that no one, no man can tame the tongue. So in doing so, we have to give it over to the spirit of the living God. And this is one of the reasons it's so important for us to study and make deposits uh, so that when we get ready to speak or engaging with others, that which we 
uh, give off or that which comes out of us is based on the deposit of, from the word of God that has been made. And so we can speak good things if we deposit good things. You know, we can uh, share uh, encouraging, inspiring words with others if we're studying the Word of God and we're depositing those things, you know, in our lives. And that is the battle that we have each and every day. As verse 6 uh, continues to say, uh, Jan, as you read earlier, Dan, it stains the whole body and sets uh, the course of life on fire and itself set on fire by hell. So we get to understand, you know, the source of the tongue. Where does it get its ability to communicate the way that it does? Well, I think the answer to that is exactly <laughs> what James is saying. I mean, yes, he, he's a, he doesn't mince words no, in, no, even a little no. bit here. He says the destructive power of the tongue is set on fire by hell. Mm-hmm. This, is, this is what Satan himself is putting in us. Yes. This is what combats us this is the, <laughs> this is the the war that rages within yes. us bes- between the holy spirit yes. who is within us and the this other spirit which wants to dominate that R- realizes it as long as we are still breathing can be pulled back Absolutely. you know and he wants to grab hold of whatever can give him the most control in our lives and that just happens to be our tongue mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and you know a lot of times we have to just like athletic teams they they study the uh, opposing team. They watch the game film. They actually, I mean, they, they what boxers, they uh, study their opponent because they want to try to find out where the weaknesses are so that they can capitalize on it. And the enemy studies us. See, we have to always remember, you know, we before Christ, we played on his team, as we've said before. We, you know, we were first round draft picks. You know, we were the best thing going. And it's not like he would want to uh, <laughs> lose that great player. You know, no one wants, no college team wants a great player to transfer from their school to another university we have actually transferred or or actually been born again into a new kingdom but we were born again into that new kingdom in this old body and so we all are at all times we are in a constant battle uh, because when we think things, those old thoughts that we've had, the only way people know where you are or what country an individual is from is by way of his speech. You know, it hit me somewhere in the middle of you <laughs> speaking what you said that we're, we're the first round draft pick. Yeah. He does want to um, snatch us. <laughs> he, he, he would love to see us be on the other team, his team. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, he does everything he can to to sway us that direction. And he knows that if if something proceeds from our mouth, mm-hmm. you know, put it in Bible talk, if, yes. it, if we are saying things and doing things and breathing things into others, that we're hearing a fair portion of that being having ears as close to our mouth as we do. We hear what we're saying. and We begin to internalize some of those things, yes, too, sir. and it begins to destruct and, and attempt to destroy mm-hmm. us. And Satan knows this, man. Yeah, that's right. You know, we, we, we talk about him, you know, the devil, like, the you know, the, the little cartoon character mm-hmm. with, with the pitchfork. Yeah. And the horns and the pointy tail, but man, it's a real battle. This is this is a real thing. He's not a cartoon character, and he knows what Mm -hmm. he's doing. He knows exactly what he's doing, and he clearly understands that he does not have the power to do anything that we don't allow him to do. He is a defeated foe, but he is a foe. He is a formidable foe because he doesn't know everything but what he does know is evil he's fully aware of evil and he does know good from the standpoint of where he was prior to uh his current state so with that being said he will attempt to get us to say good things but not uh, they are not aligned with the good work that's being assigned. If he can keep us focused on uh, just saying good things, but in the context of saying good things, iniquity is found in our heart like it was found in his heart. Those unseen sins, the jealousy, the envy, you know, the covetousness, those things that we may say something nice, but we know good and well that, that we didn't mean that. 
We didn't aim our words at uh, a, a, a target for the for the specific purpose of lifting someone up. We're trying to get something out of that that actually makes us feel good, not the spirit feel good, but that makes us feel good. And when we really think about, you know, the tongue and the power that it has and the course of life that it sets on fire, if we just think about, let me just, I just think about some of the things that I have said to people in my past that were uh, destructive, man. I mean, I'm, I'm saying what I'm saying to hurt you. And so everybody has a clear understanding. If they would be honest with themselves, uh, the words that they choose to use, what are you aiming those words at? What mm-hmm. result do you want from the words that you use? Yeah, man. And, you know, back to what you said from the first part of that chapter, mm-hmm. you know, that uh, not many of us should want to become teachers. <laughs> and, and I know when I have the opportunity to teach, yes, sir. you know, I might I might mumble when, uh-huh. I'm, when I'm on the air and doing things here, you know, I'll say, oh, no, take a long time to start a word. <laughs> but, man, when I am standing in a position of teaching and I wish I would I wish I would translate that more mm-hmm. to being here on air. People may think I'm making dramatic pauses, mm-hmm. but I'm waiting till I, <laughs> sometimes, sometimes I stop so I don't say what I don't want to mm-hmm. say. And I would say that's the power of the Spirit. But, you know, when you get right down to it, this, mm-hmm. this passage, John 3, 6, let me read okay. it one more time. And the tongue is a fire. Uh-huh. The tongue, a world of unrighteousness, is yes. placed among our members. It yes. stains the whole body, the sets body. the course of life on fire, mm-hmm. and is itself set on fire by hell. Mm-hmm. This this whole verse is a call to self-awareness. Mm-hmm. You know, we, we so often speak, like you said, without thinking. We let mm-hmm. words slip without considering the full impact. Yes. We do things that we n- ought not do. Yes. But if our words carry the potential for so much harm, mm-hmm. it is absolutely worth pausing. It's worth reflecting. It's worth being self-aware before we open our mouth to speak. And this is what James is warning us against here. He is calling us to self-awareness about not just how we use our tongue, but even mm-hmm. when we use our tongue. Absolutely. Even when we use it, you think about the fire that it says, how it, 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 it the tongue has the power to decrease people's you know, self-esteem, has the power to break relationships, has the power to destroy the plans and ideas, the thoughts, the imaginations of others, and that of yourself and the the crazy thing about it is that with the tongue we many have talked themselves into depression Mm. into anxiety into being an underachiever into not uh, uh, excelling uh, the way that God will have them to as a direct result of the conversations that they will have with themselves and when James looks at, at verse 9 he says with the tongue we bless our Lord and Father and with it we curse people who are made in God's likeness blessings and cursings come out of the same mouth he says my brothers and sisters these things should not be this way. Um, does a spring uh, pour out sweet and bitter water from the same opening? Can a fig tree produce olives, my brothers and sisters, or a grapevine produce figs? Neither can a salt water spring yield fresh water. And James is really sharing with us our tongue is really polluted. It's really polluted. And it has the propensity or the ability to uh, do two things that it shouldn't do. So it can say bad things, say good things. And what we have to be mindful of, since we can't really control it, because the Bible says no man can control, no man can control the tongue. This small member, just as small as the bit in the horse's mouth, just as small as the rudder that the pilot turns on the ships, this small member and that person uh, who put the horse in the bit's mouth, who's riding the horse, the person who the pilot of the ship, he can actually direct the rudder or the bit which directs the horse. But the tongue, that small, small Thing that each of us have, no man can control it. So, who should we give the control over to? 
This is good stuff, man. And, <laughs> you know, you hit on something a few moments ago about the things we say to ourselves. Yes. And sometimes we don't even have to use our tongue. No. You know, we, we say things to ourselves mm-hmm. internally. And yes. I know you work in behavioral sciences. Yes, and, and so yes, you sir. get this. You see the effects of not just saying negative things mm-hmm. to yourself or mm-hmm. to the mirror or whatever, yes. but of thinking these negative thoughts to and about yourself mm-hmm. because they these are the things that destroy us this is some of the stuff that that leads the the ratio of mm-hmm. angry time to not angry time the, <laughs> yes. you know and, and drive this number of suicides mm-hmm. so high when we begin to believe some of the things that others say about us but mm-hmm. we begin to believe and internalize the things that we say about us or maybe that we say to or about somebody else yes and they become reflected back on us, and we find ourselves in a bad place and only getting worse Mm -hmm. as that voice becomes louder and louder because Satan is out to make that all happen. Absolutely. He is out to make that happen. I think, Dan, that too. We have to, as we discuss this, we're just sharing with one another the truth. And sometimes... It may sound like, okay, well, if I can't control the tongue, why should I even try? <laughs> well, uh, the reason is, is that if you don't make an effort to and exercise your will to first and foremost not try to control your tongue on your own because you can't, but make the decision to give your life to Christ by asking him to forgive you of your sins, to accept his Lord and Savior uh, as your Christ, the Lord over your life, and then ask him, set a watch over my mouth, keep the doors of my lips, because only he can do so. Only he can control the tongue by way of the Holy Spirit. And Jesus shared some uh, exciting words in the Gospel of Matthew, uh, starting at verse 33, when he was talking to uh, the Jews. He says, either make the tree good and his fruits will be good. Now, this is after he's having a discussion <laughs> with uh, the Jews uh, uh, because they had even gone so far to uh, even say that all the work that he was doing, they were attributing it to Satan, the tongue. They were using their tongues to, to do this. So he says, either make the tree good and its fruit will be good, or make the tree bad and its fruit will be bad. For a tree is known by its fruit. Now, he says here in 34, brood of vipers. Well, why use brood of vipers? Because the viper's tongue, the venom that, 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 that is there. How can you speak good things when you are evil? For the mouth speaks from the overflow of the heart. He says, now, here are two hearts. A good person produces good things from his storeroom of good. And an evil person produces evil things from his storeroom of evil. I tell you that on the day of judgment, this is Jesus speaking, that on the day of judgment, people will have to give an account. And I can read it this way. I tell you on the day of judgment, Tony will have to give an account for every careless word. And some versions say idle word for every slip of the tongue, careless word that speak for your words, for by your words, you will be acquitted and by your words, you will be condemned. Man, this is just how important it is for you and I to govern, to manage, to monitor, to allow the Holy Spirit to do all three so that the words that come out of our mouth, off of our tongue, since it is an unruly evil full of deadly poison, and Jesus calls these folk a brood of vipers. And he does that because of that poisonous venom that the vipers have 
on their tongues. I mean, you think about that. <laughs> I, you know, going back to that, yes, that verse 36, you know, I mean, these are, if you got a red letter Bible, these are red, man. Yeah. This is Jesus talking. Yeah. Can you can you imagine? I mean, you know, we, we have to give an account for all that we have yeah. done. Yes. And I tell you that on the day of judgment, people will have to account yes. for every careless word every they speak. Word. Man, that, that's that's some heavy stuff yeah. right there, man. Our, our words are destructive, and, and it's, just, it's like... They're coming straight from hell. I mean, that's really intense. It's very you know, intense. When, man. when you think about, it, you know, a, a minute ago you said, hey, "Well, if we can't control it, why, why even try?" Yeah. And then, then you basically presented the gospel, and you said, "This is how." Yes, yeah, sir. You know, there, there is a how in there, mm-hmm. and when we let. Um, the Holy Spirit yes. come in and and be the one who has the control mm-hmm. in mm-hmm. our life, and and anybody who tells you that living the Christian life, doing the things that Tony and I are talking about yes, right sir. now, doing those things, it ain't easy, no, man. No, we're not, we're not, no. We don't want to imply no. that it's easy. It but is. you know what? It's doable. It's doable. You know, you, yeah. with the power, I mean, that's that's where the power comes from. Yes. The power comes from the very one who can, yes. who, can, uh, who can save us, and he can also give us the power to control our words. But we, at some point, have to turn the key and make that part of us. We have to open that door and want to control. We have to desire to be different and desire to do better and determine to do differently and and just plain do it when it comes to controlling our tongue. Absolutely. Otherwise, we end up in that verse 36 Mm -hmm. there in Matthew chapter 18. Yes. You know, uh, we will give an account for every careless word we have spoken. And and then, you know, when we look uh, back at James in verse 7, he says, every kind of animal, bird, Reptile, fish is tamed and has been tamed by humankind. So in that arena, man exercises a dominion over God's creation and his ability to tame and train uh, uh, some of the some of the some of the most vicious animals, some of some of the biggest animals, some of, uh, I mean, the king of the jungle, the lion, he tames, the eagle, the king of the bird kingdom, man can tame, but his tongue, that small, (laughs) that small member of the body, man cannot tame that. And that's because man can do nothing, Tony can do nothing about the rebellious sinful state that he found himself in as a result of what happened in the garden. Tony in and of himself can do nothing about it. So Tony in and of himself cannot control the tongue because the tongue is a part of the flesh. But, and it is a fire, but the living water Mm. can put that fire out. Oh man, great analogy. <laughs> I wasn't thinking. I wasn't thinking of it that way, but I'm with you now, man. <laughs> That's good. Well, man, let me let me just say this yes, as, as we begin to wrap up today. Mm-hmm. Next time, if you're listening to me, next time you are about to say something, yes. especially if you're not sure about it, just take a moment. Yes. Take a moment and think about the fire. Yes. Choose the words that bring light and life. Instead of choosing the words yes. that are going to burn down an entire force and cause destruction far beyond our control. Amen. Thank you so much for being here. You've been listening to Your Life with your hosts, Dr. Tony Hare and Dan DeBruler. Join us again next time as we explore the questions everyone has about life, love, parenting, and relationships. Your Life airs Tuesdays at 2 p.m. on Christian 105.7, and you can always download, listen, and share online. Just look for Your Life wherever you listen to podcasts.